Hey guys, Mrs. Bodishon here. We're going to be looking at our AKS portfolio for 1A. So 1A says, um, I can develop and use models to compare and contrast the structure of atoms, ions, and isotopes. We're just going to be looking at atoms right now, okay? So the very first thing that you have on your paper is this chart, and it's asking you about protons and electrons and neutrons, but let's talk about where they're found first in an atom. So here is a picture of an atom, and you can see that there is um, a part in the center, which is called the nucleus, and in this we have protons, um, which are the red ones with a plus sign, which are positively charged particles. Um, notice they're larger um, than these on the outside, right? These are, are actually going to have a mass of what's called one amu. Atomic mass unit is an amu, okay? Um, and so each one is one amu pretty large in comparison with other components of an atom. The next one found in the nucleus is a neutron. Um, neutrons are neutral, which means they have no charge, um, and they also are the same size as a proton um, in the form of one amu for the mass, okay, atomic mass unit. So they both are one, and they are both are found in the nucleus. Um, the real difference is Neutrons are neutral and protons are positive. Now, if we go onto the outskirts of an atom, we will find the electron cloud. And in the electron cloud, you can see it's kind of whirling around and we have all of these electrons that are kind of orbiting the nucleus in kind of like a mis, uh, mismatched way, all right? Notice they're a lot smaller than a proton and a neutron. In fact, it's really hard to portray how small uh, an electron is. It's so teeny tiny, um, its mass is so insignificant, we consider it zero. Now, does it actually have mass? Yes, of course it does. Everything that's matter has mass, right? Um, so it does actually have a mass, but it's so insignificant for, for our class, we're gonna go ahead and call it zero. It's just gonna make things easier. So when we're filling out our chart, it should look something like this. So protons are positive and they are one amu for mass. Electrons are negative. Um, and they um, are zero or almost zero, okay? Um, neutrons are neutral and their mass is one amu. So if we are looking at our next thing, it's to asking us to now draw an atom, right? So it's saying draw a carbon atom and list all of these things about it. So the very first thing you want to do when you need to draw an atom is look at the periodic table. So if we're looking at the periodic table, we need to find carbon. Here is carbon right here, number six. So I'm going to blow up the carbon square so we can see what all of these symbols mean, okay? The top number is your atomic number, um, which is going to be the number of protons in your nucleus. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some dots that represent my protons. They are going to be blue, and so I have six protons in my nucleus. Now um, I can go ahead and I can draw my... Um, Mm, electrons. I'm going to have the same number of electrons as my protons uh, because this is a neutral atom, okay? So <clears throat> notice there's different rings or energy levels in our electron cloud. Uh, it's really good if you just learn from the beginning how many electrons go in each ring, okay? So the first ring can only hold up to two electrons, all right? Now that is just how much energy that ring possesses to hold those two electrons in. So if we get more than two, they have to have an additional energy level or shell put in our atom, all right? Um, the second shell holds eight electrons. And then the third shell holds eight electrons. And we won't get any bigger than that for this class. So if you just remember two, eight, eight, you'll be good to go drawing your electrons. So for example, we have six electrons in carbon so I'm gonna draw my first shell, right? And I'm gonna put two electrons, they're green. So one green here, one green here, but I need four more. And I can't put any more in this initial shell because that's all the energy it has is to hold two. So I have to draw another shell. So that's where you see the other one come in. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill it with four more, giving us a total of six, which we needed for our atom. Now I could, put up to eight in the shell, but I don't need eight, I only need six, okay? So 
the first two is going to be um, the first two are going to be my first shell and then the four in my second shell next giving me a total of six all right um now we need to find out how many neutrons we have and neutrons are actually going to be um, a subtraction problem which is super simple you just take the atomic mass which is this bottom number this bottom number tells you how much mass is in your whole atom if you remember the mass is found in our nucleus so it's protons plus our neutrons because they're both worth one amu each so if we combine those together we add them protons plus neutrons it gives us our mass number okay now we're going to talk later about why there's decimals here because that sounds weird right um, but what we're going to do to find our neutrons is we are going to round this number first to the nearest whole number. In this case, it would be 12, right? 12.01, it rounds to 12. And we're going to subtract it from the number of protons we have. And that will give us the number of neutrons because all this number is, is protons plus neutrons. So if we take the protons away, all we're left with is the neutrons, okay? So 12 minus 6 equals 6. And my neutrons are red in this case, so I have six red neutrons in my atom. And this is what carbon looks like. This is actually called a Bohr diagram of carbon.